Welcome to the second day of KSU's virtual open house. My name is Jordan Stevenson. I'm the director of student recruitment. And before we get started with our awesome folks from the Bagwell College of Education, I want to talk a minute about how you should do virtual open house. Yesterday, huge success, it was a fantastic day. You heard from admissions, you heard from the College of the Arts, and it was just, um, the experience was top notch. College of Science and Mathematics closed us out. Tons of interaction, tons of comments. We hope for the same thing today. So how should you do virtual open house? Well, if you're at home and you have access to cast this thing, what we're doing now, streaming live to Facebook and YouTube, if you can cast it to your TV, do that. It's gonna make this environment even bigger for you make it feel more live. That's what we want. That's why we did it this way. That's why we decided to stream to Facebook and YouTube instead of just doing another Zoom session. We realize everybody is Zoomed out. So this is a little bit different. If you can, stream it, cast it to your TV. That'd be really cool. If not, watch it on a computer. If that's the next best thing, great. And if not, obviously, watch it on your phone, chat with us on your phone, um, and just interact with us. <clears throat> As we're going throughout the session today, if you want to ask questions of the Bagwell College of Education, please post those in the platform that you're using. So if it's YouTube or it's Facebook, doesn't matter which one, we're going to ask questions from each platform. So make sure you're posting them there. And then we've got people live here in the room that are going to ask those questions of the presenters. Um, another thing that you should absolutely do, we have a raffle giveaway. Let me show you. I did this yesterday. It's really heavy bag. So I've been lifting weights um, to prepare for this. This is the bag. Super cool, you know, canvas bag, right? But inside are so many goodies. Even our presenters here today do not know what is inside this bag. There's things for uh, your car or your wall or wherever you want to put them. There's nice soft things. There's hard things. There's all sorts of cool things in here. The only way to know what's in this bag is to win it. So. Every session that you join and you watch and you participate in, you have the chance to enter the raffle giveaway. That link is posted, it's a bit.ly link, so it's, that's a short link basically. It's posted in the chat of both Facebook and YouTube. Go to the bit.ly link, fill it out every session that you watch. The more sessions you watch, the more you participate, the greater chances you have of winning, right? That's statistics, yes, I'm in a statistics class right now. Um, so do it, okay? Every single session, you're gonna get reminders from people like me as we go throughout the week. Okay, um, so that's a little bit about all of those things. Um, and we have the Bagwell College of Ed with us here today. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and then we're gonna get into their content. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Stacy Dela Cruz. I'm an associate professor of elementary and early childhood education, and I'm interim director of our Education Student Services, the advising unit in the Bagwell College of Education. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Adrian Epps. I'm the dean of the College of Education, and so excited that you decided to join us today. Uh, I know that you're already sold on being an educator, but we're gonna really try to convince you why Bagwell is your choice uh, to come to. Sounds good. Okay. And uh, to get us started, we've got a video. So we're going to play this video for you and uh, get you prompted about some questions for the Bagwell College of Ed. My name is Mary Cassie, and I am studying concentrations in language arts and reading at Kennesaw's Middle Grades Education Program. I had an amazing advisor, I'm Nancy Gillis, and she really mapped out everything I needed to take in order to graduate on time. For middle grades, it's a smaller program, which is amazing because we don't have as many um, peers in your class, so it's really like a community. I was a sophomore when I first entered um, into the program, and that was when I had my first um, field placement. Um, so I followed my teacher around, um, saw what she did, her daily tasks, um, as well as um, assisted with any kind of um, student um, requirements or student support, and I really just got a good feel for what it would look like as a teacher. My junior year, I really got more of a grasp of what it looked like to become a teacher, um, of all the varying assignments and requirements and things, as well as how much students need you. For our senior year, you are placed in a middle school for the whole year. Three 
days a week you would go to your placement and the other two days you would have for your in-person classes at Kennesaw. And so it would change. Um, the following semester we'd be at our placement for five full weeks, full days, um, which is a great experience, as well as we'd be taking online classes. One of the things that I love about the Bagwell College of Education is all their professors really do show a true concern and a true um, desire for you to excel, as well as their passion in growing you as an educator. I actually uh, got a job, um, my top choice school too, which was very exciting. Um, I was able to schedule five different interviews with five different schools and um, felt very comfortable um, just sharing about my teaching philosophy how I would support my students. I would say that Bagwell has definitely left, left a lasting impact on me as an educator. Whether it be content or methods or um, instructional support classes, um, they have really um, just uh, share the message of how you as a teacher, how you as an educator are going to um, really need to support each one of your students' needs. All right, welcome back everybody. I don't know if you can see, but we've had a little bit of a set change. We have the awesome Kelly Johnson Oxford on set. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself um, and we're gonna get back into talking about Bagwell College of Ed. Great, hi everyone. I am the undergraduate and graduate admissions uh, as assistant director for undergraduate and graduate admissions as well as the certification officer in the Bagwell College of Education. And I am seated in the Dean Suite with our wonderful Dean and uh, I'm in the office of OAA, Assessment and Accreditation. Everybody has a lot of job titles and a lot of job responsibilities when it comes to education. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, if absolutely. anything, you know, <laughs> one, one and a half of my degrees is from a college of ed, so if anything, <laughs> I'm learning that right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the game in education. You have to do, do it all. Well, awesome. we, we don't just have university accreditation, we have to have the accreditations for our College of Ed, so right. yeah, we right. go beyond. Right. Well, let's get talking about some of your degree programs. Okay, so we wanted to discuss um, our undergraduate degree programs in the Bagwell College of Education. If you are interested in pursuing a birth through kindergarten degree, you could take um, our birth to age five program, which has certification and non-certification tracks. And so the difference between those two would be that the certification track actually, when you do your year long clinical student teaching, is actually done in a public elementary school. And you would also have to take the GACE exam, which is a content area expertise exam at the end of the program. A non-cert track for birth through kindergarten is built for those who are already practicing uh, teachers in preschools or daycares and they want to stay in their classroom to complete their year-long clinical experience, um, we have an option for that as well with our non-cert track. Or perhaps you're interested in our elementary and early childhood program, which is where I teach. Mm -hmm. um, it is the pre-K through fifth grade um, track and in that program you are a teacher of almost like everything. So you're reading, writing, math, science, social studies, all the content areas. We also have our middle grades education program, which is designed for uh, students who want to pursue teaching in grades four through eight. And we ha you would select two concentrations in either language arts, mathematics, science, or social studies. And then we have our secondary education program, which is grades six through 12. And you would select one concentration in biology, chemistry, mathematics, and physics. And so those are the undergraduate programs housed in the Bagwell College of Education. There's other education programs like art and English education, but they're not housed within our college. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. More of a so, yeah. partnership, yeah. if you will. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think you were going to talk about the graduate programs as well that you have, yes? Um, no. We actually are not, but we not, offer okay, a perfect. variety of graduate <laughs> programs, and we encourage you sorry, to look sorry. online no, for those. Yeah. Right. You never yes. know. We have some parents <laughs> out here, um, some other yeah. people that may be, may be more at that level. So Yeah, we offer yeah, master's yeah. degree, master's in the art of teaching, special educational specialist degrees, and doctoral programs. As well as the endorsement programs. Endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. certification programs. Yeah, and cert only Certificates, programs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we may be talking about this a little bit later on, but I know um, from spending a lot of time with Bagwell College of Ed over time and just know, knowing about education, um, how do, this is a question that, that, that I've got, for prospective students out there, whether they be in high school or they be maybe at a community college or another school right now and they want to transfer to us, 
what's the best way to think about, do I want to be an elementary ed um, teacher? Do I want to be a middle grades teacher? Other than just job security for middle grades. Mm -hmm. But you know, how do, how do they figure out which kind of track they want to go on? Well, I think it's really where they, they have to decide where they have their passion. If they prefer to teach the younger children, grade, the pre-K through fifth grade, they're going to have to become content, content knowledgeable in all subject areas. So they, they have to enjoy teaching the younger children, but they also have to understand all areas. So they're going to be the social studies teacher, the math teacher, the science teacher, the reading, the reading and literacy teacher for those, so that, for that age group. And where we find that some people really enjoy the age group, uh, others really enjoy the content, and that's where they tend to go more towards the middle grades. And then those who love, say, Shakespeare, or those who love the health and physical ed, they're gonna go in even more specific. So that gets them up into the high school ages, high school age children that they're going to interact with. So it's really where they feel their comfort level. It's where you wanna teach, it's, it's the grades, the, the, the age of the children, the content. If you have a passion about an area, and you follow your passion. With anything in life, you always wanna follow your passion. So if you're a content specialist, and Shakespeare, health and PE, art, uh, music, then go that way. But if you enjoy the age of the students, uh, that being you know the elementary age, and we have people who are very passionate about a specific grade within the elementary school. So that's gonna be like your, your first and second graders, or it's gonna be your third through fifth graders. Uh, you get more into the content specific when you get on, as, as they progress through the elementary schools, if I'm correct, yes. um, Dr. Dela Cruz. But it's, it's really what you have a passion to teach, the age group or the content. Mm -hmm. So we always encourage, we have an intro to education course, um, which is a prereq for admission to the College of Ed. It's a prereq to many of our courses, of course, as, a, as an admission requirement. But what, what we do in that is we introduce students to the different mm -hmm. grade bands and, and try and get them to interact. If, if, they're, if they're really passionate about the elementary schools, but they might be thinking about the middle schools, then we want them to experience maybe the middle school so that they know, yeah, the elementary school is where my, my passion is. So we want you to be comfortable where you're going to end up in life. We want you to remain passionate. Every day when you get up as a teacher, you should be passionate about what you do. So. That intro course, um, I know, for instance, when I was doing my undergrad, um, that intro course was super meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. uh, one, um, I did not do my undergrad in education, but it was really meaningful to me to figure out I didn't want to do business. Oh. So, <laughs> you know, I would So, at what point in a student coming to KSU, at what point should they take that intro to education course? Well, it's usually in the sophomore in the year. sophomore year. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they have to have English 1101 and 1102, which are the freshman year courses. Unless they unless they clep or or you know if they've clepped out of those courses, we might have students who are in their freshman year that are able to take that course. But where we see most students take it, it's the the first semester of their sophomore, sophomore year. year. Right. Yeah. So yeah. pretty early on, students Absolutely. that are out there that are really questioning, do I want to do education mm -hmm. for yeah. for not only my bachelor's degree, but for my career, as well as what level of mm -hmm. education do I want to teach within, um, mm -hmm. you know, potentially, right? It's not all, you're not pigeonholed for the rest right. of your life. Um, that they'll know that first mm -hmm. semester, sophomore year, hopefully they're, they're gonna come, they're gonna get on track because they're gonna work with our advisors and they're gonna be ready to go first mm -hmm. semester, sophomore year. Awesome. Yeah, I usually, we, we, usually a, we see that. Yeah, we get a lot of those questions in admissions. It's It's, how, I mean, because there's so many options with mm -hmm. education, and it's how do I know where I belong, right? Mm -hmm. um, so any way that we can, we can help steer them in that direction, that's, that's what we want to do. Well, it's in that sophomore year that they, that they start getting into the prereqs that are associated with the, the areas. So usually the second semester of the sophomore year, they're, they're in those prereq courses if they're going into the secondary English or they're going into the secondary mathematics. Mm -hmm. They need to continue to pro progress in, in, in their prereqs to those upper level courses. You know, if they're going to be a, a high school math teacher teaching, you know, 
ninth or tenth grade algebra, then they need to they need to know usually in their sophomore year that they can't just stop with stats. Mm -hmm. They have to continue because they're taking one to two to four courses, and, and Dr. Epps could attest to this, they're taking one to two, four, five courses a semester in mathematics. So as they progress in their sophomore year and they, and, and they determine where they want to teach, what grade bands they want to teach, what content area, they really, it, it's because they're doing it that first semester of their sophomore year that it's important that they go ahead and take that intro to education course so that they know as they progress, they, they're on track to graduate in mm. four years. Yeah, yeah. So thinking about um, progressing towards graduation and student support, student success, uh, let's talk about the supports that students receive through the Bagwell <coughs> College of Education um, and, and the culture here mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the school. Um, one thing that we really take pride in is that our, of our faculty, our awesome faculty mm -hmm. in the Bagwell College of Education with a variety of research interests, diverse faculty, diverse um, backgrounds, diverse research interests. And one thing that I love um, being collaborating with all of these professionals and wonderful professors is that we actually try to stay connected in the classroom. So not only are we teaching, but we're also supervising in local schools. Um, we're supervising our student teachers. Mm -hmm. We're researching in local schools. So um, we are very connected. We have a variety of partner districts and schools that we uh, partner with. So that's really nice that we stay connected. It's mm -hmm. not like we taught 20 years ago and we haven't been in the classroom since. We are continually, you know, just um, professional development and we're lifelong learners in the Bagwell College of Education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so definitely you have faculty support, you have our amazing advising unit um, with advisors in all the different content areas. Uh, we also have a teacher resource and activity center, which uh, Kelly will talk more about in a minute. Mm -hmm. We have a variety of labs that um, support the students. Of course, campus resources um, like tutoring available. Um, and then also, um, I wanted to touch on the, um, the, the student climate and culture. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, students in education who are student athletes. We have um, organizations like the hashtag Black Teachers Matter organization. We also have um, just other sororities you know, so students are involved in so much in the Bagwell College of Education, and we definitely um, encourage them to be involved. We support them. Um, we want them to be involved in the Al culture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Al Nation. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, I did. I have a question as well. I know. Sorry, I'm peppering you yeah. with all these questions that I didn't tell you ahead of time. But um, we, in admissions, we hear a lot from prospective students um, about where are they going to student teach. And you mentioned some of these partner school districts and. Um, where are some, maybe you don't talk about examples specifically, but counties and school systems, because that's one thing that, that we talk about a lot, is you come to Kennesaw State because we are a diverse institution. We're in an incredible place. The location mm -hmm. of KSU, it, it could not be better, right? Oh, I yeah, mean, no it's wild that the access that we have to every type of, particularly talking about education, every type of school system of everybody from rural all the way to, to super urban. Um, and it, it's unique to be at a school like us where you're out in suburban Metro Atlanta and you have all this access and you wanna be an educator and to ultimately be able to experience different school systems, unlike some, and I'm not, I'm not here to name names, unlike some schools where you go to college and you're, you're off in a, a college town or something like that um, and it's difficult mm -hmm. to get a, a variety of diverse teaching um, assistantships or be able to experience just a diverse set of uh, school systems. So what's, what's that like for our students and what are some of these, what, name some of these areas? And, and I would say that in our programs, we really are intentional about placing students with diverse students. So um, you might be in a placement with a high population of English language learners in one placement. Um, you might be in a placement where you're focusing a lot with your math class and doing some math tutoring in another class. You know, with the younger grades one, one semester, the upper grades in another semester. Uh, but we partner with a variety of districts, Cobb, Cherokee, Atlanta Public Schools. Gwinnett, Fulton. Gwinnett, Fulton. Mm -hmm. Cherokee, yeah. did I say Cherokee? Yeah, you said Cherokee. <laughs> Cartersville City, um, Marietta City, yeah, Paulding. Mm -hmm. We do have some placements in Polk, some in Douglas. Mm -hmm. But we've done, we done I, Gordon before. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we do have, we offer 
even to go beyond the, the metro Atlanta area, we offer field placements internationally. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, COVID has, of course, <laughs> hampered sure, that a, sure, a little bit. Sure. But we've, we've had placements in China, Belize, Ecuador. Costa Rica. Costa Rica, mm -hmm. Brazil. Korea, Bra Brazil. Mm -hmm. So we, we offer a multitude of opportunities for students to experience diversity within mm -hmm. our college and different grade bands. Again, even if they're teaching, even if you're an elementary school major, you can have an experience that goes beyond the elementary school setting. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to know. <laughs> yeah. For well, we have our, our clinical education placements and partnerships office does facilitate the placement of our of our teachers. But our programs are all built to become for te for the student to eventually become certified in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't go beyond the borders of, of Georgia. Right. So. Right. Makes sense. Um, so let's talk a little bit about supporting students uh, for success through their college units. Oh, so, uh, well, then that, that would probably be through, of course, Education Student Services, which advises our students from the moment. Ideally, we want students who are education majors or intend to be education majors to visit their advisors, whether that is in Education Student Services, which advises programs that are housed within the Bagwell College of Education as well as uh, history and health and PE majors. But we also encourage students to seek support from their faculty advisors in programs that are outside of the Bagwell College of Education that are co-hosted by our EPP um, or our EPP, uh, Education prof profession, provi profession Provider. Uh, but we we want students to be supported throughout their career. They can always, and there's always interaction. Uh, there's BCOE underscore admit, which is the admissions uh, email address, BCOE underscore admit at kennesaw.edu. Answers questions regarding admission requirements. It's a separate admission requirement. So KSU, once you're admitted to KSU, you also, as you progress in your education at KSU, you'll be, you'll, you'll encounter interactions or you'll be in courses where we will introduce you to the requirements for admission to the College of Education. So BCOE underscore admit answers questions for admissions. Uh, BCOE underscore advising, we support virtually. We've adapted to, to COVID-19. Um, and the new norm. Uh, and then as they progress in their education, we have, um, we have multiple email addresses. So BCOE underscore certification with certification questions. So we try to support uh, as best as we can throughout their, their studies, the student and their success. So we have we have engagement with the students from the, the staff level to the faculty level, to the dean level, um, to the associate dean. Our college tries to engage as best as possible with every student. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, well, one, you mentioned a lot of acronyms. Oh, so let's, sorry. Let's, you know, let's, let's throw that out there that yeah. for people out there, uh, if you're planning on going into education, you're going to learn a lot of acronyms. Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't want to point that out. Um, but Not intentionally to <coughs> yeah, confuse people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit, um, just kind of here and there. But where do our graduates go? What, what do our graduates, I know that may sound you know, silly to say because we're talking about education, but um, where do our graduates go? You've mentioned some, we, we have partnerships here locally. We have partnership. well, we've had placements internationally. Um, but where do our graduates go and, and how much money can they expect to make? I know that's a strange thing to talk about. Really? Um, just money. Really like super, strange. I mean, yeah, you know, um, uh, Kelly and I know each other a long time, but Dr. De La Cruz, uh, we just met. Uh, we met virtually uh, like everybody else yeah. now, nowadays. Uh, we're all meeting virtually. I do want to talk about virtual stuff too in a second. Absolutely. Um, but where can our graduates expect to go? Um, which kind of jobs can they expect to get, and then how much money can they expect to make? 
I really feel like when they're placed in the year-long clinical experience here in the Bagwell College of Education with our partner districts, uh, partner districts want to scoop them up right away yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and offer them contracts. And it's amazing because a lot of students I teach are like, oh, I got a job. And I'm like, wow, it's not even the end of the school year yet. <laughs> you have a contract. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that the reputation is known in the community that we produce awesome, ta amazing teachers. Um, so a lot stay, stay locally. I've heard from a few, a few of my students who teach out of state. Uh, which might have some different like qualifications they might have to take another entry level test or something mm -hmm. but they get their certification there and then i've had a few recently who say we want to teach in china or we want to go teach in a, in a school in korea mm -hmm. will you give me a letter of recommendation I'm like yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. Um, so, and then I'll have Kelly answer the, the payment question, <laughs> the salary. Uh, well, the average the average <laughs> teacher pay for the state of Georgia, average, is $55,000. Uh, that's not necessarily the starting pay for it. It's totally dependent on the school district, uh, what the what the pay is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the value there is going to be urban versus suburban, the cost of living associated mm -hmm. with being a teacher in that area. So what we find is the average is around 55, going from a bachelor's to a master's, which is what we see a lot of teachers do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's usually on average about a $5,000 a year pay bump, which is an encouraging thing. Uh, not always do you see a pay bump for getting an advanced degree, but within education, that's very common. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to piggyback on what Dr. Dela Cruz has said, I've done, I've done paperwork for students who are teaching in Morocco, mm -hmm. Kuwait, uh, China, Hong, uh, well, Hong Kong, part of China, mm -hmm. of course, uh, and, and they are teaching in Korea, but we have students within the United States that are, are teaching in Alaska, Hawaii, just, just this past year, mm -hmm. I did paperwork for people moving to Alaska, Hawaii, Colorado, Montana, Connecticut and New York. So, I mean, it's a good variety of yeah. teachers. They're not, our, our students are not necessarily staying pigeonholed in, in this central, in this localized area. They're moving beyond these boundaries. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's a testimony to what we have done as an institution and as a college. We have enabled them, empowered them to know that they can step out beyond their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'll share my own story, and so I have um, I have two daughters. My youngest is in second grade. She goes to Pickett's Mill Elementary. Shout out to Pickett's Mill, you're awesome. Um, go Pirates! And uh, pretty much, it's 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 funny to me. I say funny. That's probably the way I talk all the time. Um, but pretty much every one of my daughter's teachers has had some degree come from KSU. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, from the principal down, you're like, oh, okay, you got your doctorate at, um, from Bagwell at KSU. Oh, you got your master's from Bagwell. You did your <laughs> undergrad and your master's. It's so, it, for me, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, it means I have to give away a lot of stuff, too. Wow. Like, oh, oh, you want some keychains? You need some t-shirts? <laughs> um, you know, because we, we want them repping KSU all the time. Mm -hmm. But no, it's, it's, um, and it's just been uh, phenomenal, even from a personal level. Um, it's my, my daughter is um, loving school and has incredible teachers and has had incredible teachers and um, I think even just personally and working for the university it gives me a lot of pride um, to be able to uh, come here and be a part of education that, that also leaves to educate others right and, and um, to know that we do a really good job producing educators um, so that's my little personal anecdote um, there and uh, love you Pickett's Mill so um, we have had some really cool building expansions for the Bagwell College of Ed. So I know we want to talk about that a little bit because it is an impressive place mm -hmm. to come study. Mm -hmm. So here is the Bagwell College of Education and there was an um, expansion built. Um, I think it was finished in 2015. And so if you come to the Bagwell College of Education, your classrooms are practically brand new. Um, so that's the outside, it's so beautiful. Um, that's from the other side, entering into our literacy clinic there, where the Big Al bus stops. Mm -hmm. This is the inside of the Bagwell <laughs> Education Building lobby, where there you can see that there's um, tables right now, spaced out for social distancing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But typically, there are study groups. We have study areas that overlook Kennesaw Mountain, just beautiful views on our you know third floor, fourth floor. Um, we have lab classrooms, um, announcement boards, all of those kind of things. 
So I guess going into lab classrooms, can we talk a little yeah, bit about absolutely, that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think we've got, you have some videos you want to reference as well? Yeah. I believe, okay, yeah, feel free. Yeah, talk so the, the first um, one we have here is our innovation lab. So this really puts us um, to the forefront here in technology. So Coach Helen Maddox um, is the director of our innovation lab. And as you can see there, we had some Lake Forest fifth graders come out a couple years in a row and experience the innovation lab. Mm. We have green screen, we have um, 3D printer, we have Ozobots coding things all within the lab. So our faculty. I think that wasn't an acronym. That was a, that's an actual name. Ozobots. Ozobots. Yeah, they're like little robots yeah. that the uh, little kids can control on a mat and it moves uh, around. Huh? They code them. That's cool. Yeah, I'm sure your 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 children have done. It. <laughs> they, they, just, they know so they're much. They're so excited about <laughs> that it. Like, it's over your head. Yeah, maybe. I'm like what? Any, robot? Um, anything? Yeah, I think we experienced something. It sounds like she's probably played with them at school and yeah. you know done whatever at school, learned at school. Um, but uh, I feel like she did something like that at the Apple Store one time, mm, you know, like yeah, coding yeah. on a yeah. on a, a mat on a iPad, and then there were some things that. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. We exactly. do it at BCOE. We go. do it in the College of Ed. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So not only do the faculty, um, we we can book the reserve the lab and we can bring our can teacher candidates in to experience all this mm. wonderful technology, but we also you know bring student field trips in and they get to experience the technology as well. So that's our innovation lab and um, kind of going with that is our maker bus and so that's kind of like the innovation lab on wheels mm. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's amazing and so the bus goes out and consults with local school districts and teachers and classrooms and the students actually get on the bus and they experience all that technology like the 3d doodler pen and they do crafts anything to innovate um, the students hmm. where does the where has the bus been how about that um Wow, they work a lot with Fulton County. I mm -hmm. know that, and okay, I know cool. Cobb County Schools, Marietta City, mm -hmm. Gwinnett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the places that all everybody one wants to be, wants to work in education, all here in the metro area, um, yeah. and then all the places where we have partnerships. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah. But we're open to go anywhere yeah, <laughs> if You asked. never know who's watching. That's Absolutely, right. parents, right. educators. Uh, yeah. There, yeah. Our maker bus is available. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's super yeah. cool. We bring it to you. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> we also have an avatar lab, and that um, I have a. We have a video clip we're going to play mm -hmm. about that. Nice, awesome. Let's check it out. Teacher preparation is at its core looking at strategies that can reach all students. So in this lab we have 60 some odd different uh, high tech and low tech devices and these devices have been accessible to 500 plus pre-service teachers and a couple hundred community partners that have indeed visited the lab. The latest addition to the lab was actually provided by the Lexia Reading Core 5. This program is focused up to grade five and it provides different literacy-based instruction. And what is really nice about this program is the analytics and the data that is provided, which shows where the students' needs are so that teachers can indeed uh, adjust the instruction. Well done. One of the core virtues of the Universal Design for Learning Lab is community engagement. We offer opportunities for families, for teachers, for agencies to come and visit the lab, and we are glad to be a resource to the community. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, you found those videos really cool, really informative, and um, we want to take a minute to talk through kind of what, what we're living through right now. I mean, it's partially the reason why, mm -hmm. it's really a big reason why um, we're doing virtual open house. Um, Kelly mentioned earlier, just threw out virtual, you know, because yeah. now it's just mm -hmm. a part of our- our um, uh, Everyday lives. Everyday life, it's part of our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You know, you throw virtual in front of something and, and bada book, bada boom, there you go. Um, it is what it is. And so I, I do want to talk about um, how, I mean, what an incredible time mm -hmm. to, I mean, as unfortunate as it is, every industry has been affected by COVID-19. 
every industry has turned in some some fashion virtual. Um, and how are, are um, our educators preparing students to, to live and work in this virtual world? Um, I know we've talked about some of the labs, but what are some of the things that the Bagwell College of Education is doing to help our current students be prepared for the next thing like COVID-19? I feel like we were on the forefront before it even hit. Yeah, yeah, um, yes, absolutely. But one thing is that we have an amazing instructional technology. Shout out to the iTechs IT um, faculty. They do live tech sessions and they do them for the faculty and the students in the Bagwell College of Education. And so on a variety of um, plat like platforms, like if you want to learn more about Zoom, Microsoft Teams, if you want to learn more about building a Bitmoji classroom, they can sure help you. <laughs> oh, cool. I've seen some Bitmoji classrooms so, yeah. with my seven-year-old. <laughs> and and, and when, when she says iTech, that's instructional technology. That's our that's our iTech department. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, and, and from the first week of, of the COVID shutdown, I, we, we responded very quickly. Mm -hmm. So. And of course, um, in any of our programs, we you, you take an iTech course, one or more iTech courses. But in, in addition to that, they're also doing mm -hmm. the live sessions. Um, we have the Avatar Lab, which you saw, which is amazing. And so um, professors can reserve the Avatar Lab and our student teachers, our teacher candidates can actually interact with avatars. Mm -hmm. They can have parent-teacher conferences with these avatars, like a parent avatar is there, yeah, yeah. and you're holding a conference with them, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. um, they can also teach their a lesson to like a small class, mm -hmm. so they can practice as well. So that avatar lab is amazing, and that's our um, inclusive education department mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. who ha houses that. And then we have our universal design for learning lab, which was also shown on the video, and that's our assistive technology devices, uh, so students get you know used to all of those technologies as well. Mm -hmm. But other, yeah. I mean, where 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 this has where COVID has entered and created a new normal, we've adapted such that it's now improved their diversity of the learning experience that mm -hmm. the students have here at KSU. So where you might have encountered individuals who or, or students who were gifted or had a physical disability you're encountering people who have technology disabilities. Mm -hmm. So our teachers, where many industries, you know, doctor's offices shut down for a month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers, they did go home, but education can't stop. Right. So we had to, we had to adapt, but also our students and our teachers in the public schools and the private schools, they still have to teach the children. I mean, because the children are still aging, they're still growing up. So we have to, we feel like we've been as innovative as possible because we had to. Mm -hmm. uh, where other businesses, you know, the restaurant business, they mm -hmm. could they could close down for a month at a time. Not that they wanted to. Yeah, right. Yeah, not, not that any of us right. wanted them to. But um, education has to continue because children are still progressing and they still need that education. So. Where, where parents had to take up some of the activities as, as we first were hit with COVID, we've, we've adapted by uh, affording opportunities for virtual placements. So where our students used to be in public schools in Paulding County or in Cobb County, mm -hmm. which, which was virtual until recently, Cobb County was virtual until recently, we still had our students placed in Cobb County. They just did virtual experiences. Mm -hmm. So they either went to the school and they were in the classroom with the teacher and teaching the students virtually, or they were at their home and the teacher was at their home and they were, they were teaching virtually. So this, you know, some one county, Paulding County, was teaching in class on campus or offering both. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could be a stay-at-home student or you could be on campus, but some counties were all virtual. But we can't just say, you know, we have 400 students now that need to be placed by our clinical, our clinical uh, education placements and partnerships office. We, we had to facilitate our, our students still having a meaningful experience in their public school experiences. And some are, of course, placed in private schools, but we had to adapt, and I think BCOE, Bagwell College of Education, 
was at the forefront of adapting. Mm -hmm. And as is true with our iTech department, who was leading? Yeah, and I teach. And I teach. Shout mm -hmm. out to I teach because yeah. they have an amazing newsletter. You should go up and, and sign sign up for it online. It's free. And they send Absolutely. free resources every week mm -hmm. for parents, uh, student teachers. Yeah, tons of information. So prospective students out there interested in education, sign up for the I teach. Newsletter. newsletter. That's yes. what I just heard. Amazing. Okay, yeah. there you go. That's <laughs> at least one one more action item yeah, um, for you. you. What what have y'all heard back from our students that are doing virtual teaching assistantships? What's the feedback been? I'm sure it's one difficult to wrap their brain around. I, okay, this is something that I have to do. But also, um, as we've been talking about, I mean, there's no better way to learn um, than than in this kind of environment being thrown into it and um, and also, follow-up question to that will be not only what have you heard from students, but um, how do you think, sorry, these are, this is a big question, how do you think COVID-19 in this virtual um, learning environment uh, will change education moving forward? I think that things are definitely going better now in the fall than they were in the spring mm -hmm. just because it was just so sudden. Right. Um, and so the feedback from my students has been positive. I asked them with an emoji today, show me an emoji of how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And they were all feeling really happy. So I was glad there was no crying emojis yeah, right, 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 or right, right. blowing my head <laughs> emojis. Yeah, yeah. Um, but That's yeah, good. definitely uh, doing well. And um, you know, some challenges is, is, are when you know students in the classroom are, because some of them some of them are face-to-face -face, actually. And so sometimes their, their cooperating teacher, mentor teacher is out sick and so they have to take over. And that's a perfect opportunity and it's a challenge, but they're happy to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but online, um, just keeping students' attention and engagement, you gotta keep it short, short segments, right? You know, you can't be going on for hours at a time, yeah. <laughs> especially with our elementary age kids. Um, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, that is hard. But I, I think what, what we're finding is that people go into teaching to, in, to interact with children. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's difficult for them to see that they can't, mm -hmm. they can't actively engage face to face. Mm -hmm. and, and we want, we want that, we're humans. We want that, that interchange with a person face to face. We want that, that almost that feel good environment that's created when you, en you engage face to face with a person. So what I think is the biggest challenge right now is to encourage people to, to see this as an opportunity to improve. Mm -hmm. Not that this is going to be the fixed norm that's always going to be, but really to determine that this is just an opportunity to grow, mm -hmm. advance your abilities, mm -hmm. but also know that this this really is not going to be the, we all like to say this is the new norm, we've had to adapt, but it's not. We're going to go back into the public schools. You, you know, our, our children are going to be taught in public schools. Yeah. We're going to be back on this campus, you know, maybe not this semester, maybe not next semester, but this campus is gonna be bustling, just as all our public schools are gonna be bustling. I, I think we're getting back to that, we're getting back to that area of, of um, opportunity where everyone is is you know having to adapt and mm -hmm. this is this is the new norm but it's an adaptable norm yeah it is an interesting point you made I'm gonna call it self-assessment that thinking about teaching in a virtual environment mm -hmm. I, I know this even from myself like having to do I'm in a PhD program right now and everything's virtual mm -hmm. and I much prefer one I'm old I'd rather be in the classroom. Yeah. I just learned better mm -hmm. looking at somebody's actual face than, than through the computer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it has, it has changed the way that I assess myself. It's, I had no idea I was using so many facial expressions, you know, mm -hmm. things, like as I, things like that. Mm -hmm. I do talk a lot with my hands, you know, and, and I, miss, I miss being able to express myself in certain ways. So it's changed the way that I do express myself. And, and I agree, we are relational creatures, mm -hmm. humans, absolutely. absolutely. There's no, no denying that we are relational creatures. And we want to be able to see and see body movement and see facial expression and all that kind of stuff. It just, it, it helps the learning environment, it helps whatever we're doing in life. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a part of, of life that has shifted and will, and I think that having to go through this experience, as horrible as it has been being in a pandemic period, 
um, that uh, our students and, um, and our current educators, to be honest, even my, my daughter's um, teacher who has been teaching for uh, a few decades, and um, it's changed. It's changed her. It's mm -hmm. changed, and in, in, in not necessarily in, in, in a difficult way, but in a way that she is better prepared as our our students better prepared for any of these kinds of situations mm -hmm. that, that may crop up in the future. And I would argue they're better prepared um, to teach in uh, a diverse environment, like if they're going to teach internationally. If mm -hmm all of a sudden their life changes and they're going to go abroad or they're going to move to a totally different state than the state of Georgia and there's different expectations and different access to technology and depending on where they are you know in that state at a rural school an urban school suburban school whatever it may be so you know we, we hate to go through experiences like this mm -hmm. um, but we we hope that we all learn from these kinds of experiences so oh, sure. um, yeah much like y'all are being tasked with doing something different today by Absolutely. being on camera for a virtual open house. So it's all learning experiences for everybody. Um, I know we saw pictures of um, Bagwell, but I want to reference, we have, in it, I'm going to call it impressive because it truly is. It's my job to look at other schools and see what everybody else is doing and all these, all their offerings, right? That's kind of one of my jobs. Um, we have a truly impressive virtual tour uh, of both mm -hmm. campuses. Uh, um, but here, particularly, if you want to see in-depth in the Bagwell College of Ed, check out our virtual tour. So we actually have a video, we'll play that later on, um, that, that walks through uh, both of our campuses, but pay attention to the Bagwell College of Ed and check out the Experience website. We call it Experience, because it's not just take a virtual tour, it's Experience, mm -hmm. Kennesaw State, right? Yeah, get it? Mm -hmm. um, so definitely check that out so you can see more of um, the Bagwell College of Ed. Um, I have a question, and I ask this question every time I do a Facebook Live, and it's, if you were going to leave the students that are out there, and you can direct it towards parents, you can direct it, we probably have some high school counselors watching as well. If you're going to leave the folks out there in Facebook and YouTube land one piece of advice when it comes to the Bagwell College of Education, what would you leave them with? I would say that we are preparing future educators. We're just, just so excited. We're excited to have you come on campus. Um, we'll put up our contact information in a moment. I'd love to give you a personal tour <laughs> of nice. our Bagwell College of Education. And uh, I just feel like it's just a great culture, definitely. I w my thing, it, to piggyback on what Dr. Dela Cruz says, my, my thing would be to make the most out of your entire experience at KSU and in the Bagwell College of Education. If there's an opportunity for you to do an extra placement mm. or to go outside of what you have as your comfort zone, I recommend doing that. So many people who have never stepped out of the state of Georgia have found that they have loved their international teaching experience mm -hmm. and many have even stayed international so I think it's I think take it take advantage of all the opportunities that the that the Bagwell College of Education offers the avatar lab the the maker bus and this is for everyone from from our undergrads to our grad students mm -hmm. to our parents to you know employers you know public school employers we have a lot of opportunity that provides growth both both personally and professionally. So I would say, yeah. Nice. Come to KSU. There you Come go. to the Bagwell College of That's Education. That's right. Good pieces of advice. Um, any events, any virtual or, or um, in-person events, probably more virtual, uh, coming up that y'all want to hype right now or tell well, people to watch our, out for our educators of tomorrow event yay, there you go. yay. <laughs> and so that's where we invite um, local school districts mostly high schools that have the teaching as a pathway mm -hmm. um, teaching as a profession pathway mm -hmm. which are uh, you know some courses you can take to get college credit for the teaching profession so we invite those partners to come and this year it's going to be virtually usually we invite our partners to come on campus mm -hmm. and we give them a tour but also, um, since it's virtually, we will be, you know, um, recording the presentations, which are professors talking about what life is like here in the Bible College of Education and what it means to be a teacher. So nice. we have that coming up, um, and you can, you know, definitely like email us because we'd love to send you the link. You can watch always watch the recordings later. So we have that coming up. What else? Oh gosh. And it's a tough time of year because we're getting towards <laughs> the end of the semester. Oh, yeah. um, 
and then it's it's finals and and so on yeah yeah that's the unfortunate thing we're in those unique times right now so our future educators but we always have you know the the avatar lab our teacher resource mm -hmm. activity corner that's always open uh, you want to talk more about that what, what they do yeah well our teacher that's resource cool. activity corner has uh, it's it's got a, a library of dvds books and materials that help our students in preparing presentations we have a a die cut lab we have internet access there we can help our our track it's it's called teacher resource activity corner of but course. but another our acronym. track yeah. another yeah. acronym yeah. Yeah. Uh, our track uh, <laughs> center or our track corner will uh, help students who need to make boards mm -hmm. for presentations mm -hmm. it, it just offers a wonderful opportunity for students to add to their presentations, to add to their materials. Nice. Yeah. Well, I know that y'all have thrown out a lot of resources oh. today. So I would encourage everybody to go check out the Bagwell College of Education website. It is a deep website. There's a lot of information on the website. Um, but if you're gonna work in education, then you're probably uh, at least getting accustomed to digging through a lot of information. Oh, so yeah. check it out, yeah. it's an awesome resource. Um, and tell them one more time your contact info. That way, if they have future questions, want to get involved with the, the uh, Future Educators of Tomorrow event, throw mm -hmm. those resources out there one more time. So our email is bcoe underscore advising at kennesaw.edu. Easy peasy. And then if it's something <laughs> admissions related, it's it'll gonna get... It's going to be bcoe underscore admit, A-D-M-I-T, at kennesaw.edu. Nice. So start with BCOE and then, and then yeah. run. Yeah, yeah. Yep, good, there you go. Good, good, good. Very yeah. good. Um, well, thank you all so much for spending great, time yeah. with us today, but more importantly, with everybody out there in Facebook and YouTube land. Um, so incredible resources. Uh, if you have questions, you have further questions, something happens and it gets to 8 p.m. tonight and you go, oh my gosh, I forgot to ask that question. Just throw it there in the Facebook chat or on the YouTube chat, and we will answer those questions. So make sure you're just, make sure even if it's 8 p.m. tonight, doesn't matter that the event's over, throw it there in the chat and we're gonna answer your questions for you. Um, little heads up, so we've got the College of Computing and Software Engineering up next, and then to round out the night for second, the second day of Virtual Open House, it will be financial aid and scholarships. Big time finishing session. I know everybody's gonna wanna be back for that. Make sure you fill out the giveaway entry. So your giveaway entry for the Bagwell College of Education session. Make sure you do that. And then if you're gonna participate in the rest of, of the sessions tonight, fill those out as well during the session. Um, that way you can be entered to win the really cool raffle bag that I have here at my feet that I held up earlier, but I can't keep picking it up because my arm will fall off. Um, so Bagwell College of Ed, thank y'all so much for being here. We always end with who do who and allies. So can you do it with me? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Allies and say who do who into the camera. Who do who? Who do who? <laughs>